Hello, I am Ankita Peter. I am the counsellor from DPS Expressway and I am going to introduce you to methods of psychology. A psychologist follows a systematic scientific procedure who has sound theoretical base in order to explain and interpret the phenomenon and it has various methodological ways or approaches to understand and explain psychological phenomena. Psychology has various methodological ways or approaches to understand and explain psychological phenomena. And in order to obtain responses from subjects, a number of psychological tools or instruments are used that constitute the basic data which are analyzed to study human experiences, mental processes and behaviors. The objectives chapter entitled Methods of Psychology is to explain the different approaches to the study of psychological processes, describe some important methods used in understanding human behavior and describe various instruments used in understanding human behavior and psychological processes. Now let me tell you about the approaches to the study of psychological processes. It is very important to know the approaches because it is the base of a psychology and everyone should know it. Its approaches are first biological approach. This approach focuses on biological structures and phenomena such as brain, genes, hormones, endocrine system and neurotransmitters in order to understand the dynamics of behavior. Its main focus is on the role of different parts of brain in regulating feelings, memories, emotions and other aspects of behavior. Similarly, the impact of over secretion or under secretion of different kinds of hormones in governing behavior is studied. Behavior genetics as one of the sub-disciplines studies the genetic determinants of behavior. Moreover, this approach looks for physiological basis of human behavior. Psychoanalytic approach. The father of psychoanalytic approach, Sigmund Freud, focused on unconscious libidinal energy in describing the present state of the individual. He studied mind in terms of hierarchical arrangements of experiences in the form of different layers of consciousness. Example, conscious, Preconscious and unconscious. Freud explored the nature and quality of unconscious through analysis of dreams, slips of tongue, neurosis, psychosis, work of art, and rituals. He assumed that majority of human behaviors are triggered by unconscious motivation. Thus, to understand the present human behavior, the analysis of unconscious mental contents is considered most important. Humanistic approach. Contrary to Freud, the father of humanistic approach, Carl Rogers, put greater emphasis on conscious experiences of the present situation, role of interpersonal experiences across the course of life and people's capacity to grow towards psychological maturity. This approach basically assumes that a person is an active and self-actualizing agent and has a choice in deciding behavior. As a part of the self-actualizing process, a person seeks to maintain a congruence between self and experience. However, because of past experiences, with conditional positive regard, he may deny or distort the experiences that threaten one's self system. Such a self system can be changed in the therapeutic setting through genuineness, unconditional positive regard and empathetic understanding of the client's problem by the therapist. The second one is behaviorist approach in which the unit of analysis is explicit. Objective and overt behavior and its relationship with environmental stimulation. The father of behaviorism J.B. Watson emphasized on objective analysis of behavior. He advocated that behavior is largely governed by the association between stimulus and response and the behavior can be shaped in a desired direction by manipulating this association. Cognitive approach. 
the cognitive approach emerged as an alternative to the mechanistic paradigm of behaviorism. This approach mainly focuses on the study of information, processing capacity of the individual in terms of perception, remembering, thinking, language, reasoning, problem solving and decision making process. It proposes that we look out for information in the world and our behavior depends upon the way we process this information. This approach largely relies on computational models and assumes that behavior and mental processes can be best understood by treating them in terms of information processing. Methods to understand psychological processes. In order to understand human behavior, various scientific methods are used. Its purpose is to develop principles and theories, test them and apply for solving different human problems. Psychologists use a variety of methods like observation, experimental, correlational, survey, psychological testing and case study to collect data. The aim of this section is to guide you to select the methods which may be appropriate for different research. For example, you can observe the behavior of spectators watching a football match. You can conduct an experiment to see if children taking an examination do better in the classroom in which they had studied the subject or in the examination hall, cause-effect relationship. You can correlate intelligence with, say, self-esteem for prediction purposes. You can survey students' attitude towards privatization of education. You can use psychological tests to find out individual differences. You can apply a case study technique on the development of language in a child. The main characteristics of these methods are described in the following sections. Observation. Observation is a very powerful tool of psychological inquiry. It is an effective method of studying behavior. Noticing different activities of individuals is called observation, which may be done in a natural situation, known as naturalistic observation, such as observing behavior of children in a playground. Observation carried out in a laboratory known as control observation, such as studying the effects of induced stress on task performance. Observation method is a technique in which the behavior of the research subjects is watched and recorded without any direct contact. It is also divided into participant and non-participant types depending on the role of observer. In participant type, the researcher or the observer mixes up with the event under study and conducts the study. In non-participant type, the researcher maintains an optimum distance and has little impact on the events under study. One of the main advantages of observation is that it studies the range of behaviors in the form as they are happening. However, this method requires more time and effort and often becomes victim of the biases of the researcher. Experimentation method Experiments are generally conducted to establish cause-effect relationship between two sets of events or variables in a control setting. It is a carefully regulated procedure in which changes are made in one factor and its effect is studied on another factor while keeping other related factors constant. In the experiment, cause is the event being changed or manipulated. Effect is the behavior that changes because of the manipulation. The experimenter studies the effect of one variable on the other by deliberately manipulating and controlling one variable. What is a variable? Any stimulus or event which varies, that is, it takes on different values or changes and can be measured is a variable. An object by itself is not a variable, but its attributes are. For example, the pen that you use for writing is not a variable, but there are varieties of pens available in different shapes, sizes and colors. All of these are variables. There are two types of variable, independent variable 
and dependent variable. Independent variable is a variable which is controlled and manipulated by the experimenter. It is the effect of the change in the variable which the researcher wants to observe or note in the study. Dependent variable is a variable on which the impact of independent variable is studied, therefore known as dependent variable. In experimental studies, three kinds of relevant variables are taken into account. Organismic variables that are related to personal characteristics of the participants such as age, sex and personality features. Situational variables are concerned with the quality of physical environment during the conduct of experiments such as temperature, humidity and noise. Sequential variables are related to the very procedure of conducting the experiment when the ex participant is required to be tested across several conditions. Variables play a very important role, but following techniques are used to control the unwanted effect of relevant variables. Number 1. Elimination In this technique, extraneous variables are eliminated from the experimental setting. Number 2. Making conditions constant in this technique, the extraneous variables which cannot be eliminated are kept constant in order to make their effect same during the entire experiment. Number 3. Matching. The relevant variables are equated or held at constant across all the conditions of experiment. Number 4. Counterbalancing. This technique is used to minimize the effect of order or sequence. This is usually done by dividing the participants in two groups. Random assignment number five. All the participants have equal chance to be exposed to experimental and control conditions to remove the systematic differences between groups. Another method is case study. Case study is the method which gives detailed and in-depth description of an individual's life. In this method, the main unit of analysis is the individual and his experiences, relationships, interactions across different contexts in life. The detailed information from the individual is collected from the individual himself or herself or other resources such as family, peer group, etc. In this method, a profile of a person is prepared and on that basis, analysis of his her behavior is done. In order to prepare case history data is taken and information is collected about his or her family history, educational life, medical history and social life. This method is very popular in clinical psychology and lifespan developmental psychology. In order to prepare the case history, interview, observation and psychological tests are used to obtain information about the individual. A case history thus studies the emotional and adjustment problems of an individual. Survey. This method is used by television news, channels and newspapers to collect opinions of people. For example, they conduct opinion poll during the election as to which political party enjoys support of the majority of people. Surveys in psychology are used to study the pattern of opinions attitudes, beliefs and values of people. These are conducted through questionnaire or interview on a single individual or a group. Psychological tools. For conducting psychological study, different tools are used. The administration of these tools helps the psychologist to obtain verbal, written, behavioral or psychological responses. Psychological tests. These tests are designed and developed to assess various psychological attributes. These are administered individually alone or in a group setting. These tests provide an objective assessment of different quantities and limitations of the individuals. A standardized psychological test has properties of reliability and validity. Reliability of a test refers to its consistency in terms of yielding dependable scores. Validity of a test refers to the extent to which a test measures what it claims to measure. Depending on nature and administration, a test can be verbal or nonverbal 
or a performance. In a verbal test responses are taken in a oral form. In non-verbal or test performance the responses are taken as a performance of certain behavior. Tests are again of two types objective tests and projective tests. Objective tests contain direct items about a psychological construct. Projective tests use ambiguous, vague and unstructured stimuli such as pictures, ink plots, drawings, incomplete sentences. Questionnaire. It consists of a set of questions to which the individual is required to respond. The items in a questionnaire can be closed-ended or open-ended. The closed-ended questionnaire consists of limited number of alternatives, while in open-ended questionnaire, the individual gives responses in the way he or she likes. Interview A technique of data collection in which a face-to-face -face interaction occurs between two persons with a set of objectives. The main purpose of an interview is to understand various personal characteristics such as attitudes, values, interest, preferences, etc. Interviews can be structured or unstructured. In structured interview, the interviewee is required to respond to the set of framed questions by choosing one option. For example, attribute of friendliness is measured by giving the options highly friendly, often friendly, least friendly. Unstructured interviews comprise of open-ended questions and the interviewee gives response freely. For example, conducting interviews to recruit suitable candidates for a particular job. Summary There are different approaches to explain, describe, predict and control behavior and mental processes. The main approaches are biological, psychoanalytic, behavioristic, humanistic and cognitive. Scientific method has the characteristics of being objective, testable, self-correcting and replicable. Different methods are used to understand human behavior. Observational method helps to describe a phenomenon in a laboratory or natural setting. It can be participant or non-participant. Experimental method studies the effect of one variable on another variable by manipulating one and controlling other variables. Case study focuses on one person and the person is studied in great detail to understand the underlying issues. A questionnaire consists of a set of questions which the respondent answers. It can be an open or closed-ended. Interview is a face-to-face -face interaction regarding a given topic. Interview can be structured or unstructured. Thus, we see how important it is to know about methods of psychology in order to do research and conduct experiment. Hope this lesson was useful for you to gain knowledge and use it for your future endeavors with psychology. Thank you.